That'll do. Rick T, Outdoor Adventure, and Billy Bobs. And we're out with George today. This is George from Adventure Fishing UK. Now then, how are we all? <laughs> so if you've not checked his channel out, you need to, because it's brilliant. I've been watching George for a couple of years, and he does some cracking. How long have you had your channel now? About two and a half yeah, years yeah. or something. Two yeah, and a yeah. half years. But he's built it up because uh, of his quality content. So Adventure Fishing speaks for itself. So he's out there catching perch, uh, trout, pike, a lot of pike. I've quite a bit of sea fishing lately as well, haven't you? Whatever I can, wherever I am, so, really. I think he's after every specimen he can get. So, yeah, check him out, it's good stuff. But today, we're out in our usual haunt, mine and Billy's usual haunt. We was out here a few weeks back doing a bit of fishing, a bit of fly fishing, a catch and cook. And uh, we've got a very similar plan today. So we're gonna do a little bit of bushcraft with George. He's not done a massive amount of bushcraft, so we'll probably show him a few uh, tips and tricks. And fingers crossed, we're going to catch some nice trout and cook them up. Cook them up. So, but it's stunning today, and this woodland is absolutely amazing. Look at that! Beautiful. Bluebells are out. Loads of wild edibles. It's a fantastic spot. Nice, isn't it, George? Absolutely lovely. Yeah, I'm blown away, to be honest. Yeah. So we've got a nice couple of K down to the uh, the resi and then we're going to do a bit of fishing. So stick with us. Half an hour, something like that, maybe a bit more. Uh, nothing yet, but uh, beautiful location. Like, we're both fishing a sort of Montana rig at the minute. There's nothing rising out there, there's been no hatches of flies that are visible at the minute. So, at the minute, we're fishing under the water with a Montana, but uh, as the day goes on, things might change, we might have to mix it up. But uh, yeah, we keep ticking away. But yeah, it's a beautiful location. The cormorants are out there, so must be some fish about, eh? Yeah, you're a lot more in touch with it, aren't you? Oh, it's fantastic. Feel everything, don't you? Forgive me, Mr. I've been so wild with a little bugger. Be careful on that tree. I know. Oh, it's a big brown trout, that. Is it a brown, I think all? so. Oh, well, maybe Sweet. not. Yeah, it is. Sweet. 
conscience to the fight because I want to get in the way if you get back. But a beauty. Hey, it's a lovely brownie that, isn't it? Look at them, them colours. Let's get him straight back in water, eh? Cracker. <laughs> lovely fish. Yeah. Hey, so I'm really happy with that brownie, that was a cracker. Easily the best brownie I've uh, I've ever caught, I reckon that. Must have been three pounds or so. So, you know, it went back in, because uh, catch and release for brownies. I'm trying to encourage the population of brownies to grow. So, what a beautiful fish. And talk about a fight. It's, uh, you know, that was a proper overwintered fish. Been in there a long while. Just a natural brownie, I think, more or less. Uh, so it was a great fight. But uh, so anyway, oh, what a beautiful day, and and I caught, so I'm happy. Yeah, if I catch some more to cook, it's a result. If I don't, it's a result anyway. Fantastic. Absolutely. So Joey just caught the first rainbow. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be our catch and cook. <coughs> you know, it's good stuff. The bonny looking fish as well, and a decent fight. Another uh, that must be what two and a half pound Joy to that one. Do you think? Somewhere, somewhere around £2, there, not maybe. quite as big as that brown yeah. trout though, that's yeah. for sure. Still a good size though, isn't it? Maybe yeah. two pound, but uh, a good eating size really. So, I reckon we've panassed that. Yeah, yeah. good. Lovely looking fish though, aren't they? Yeah. And at least uh, it's the brook. We're washing them off, aren't we? Get all this bark and everything off. That's it sharp enough, that knife. Yeah, that's great. It is, yeah. Cut that on there for a minute. Roger's just uh, got in and cleaning his. We'll get them on here, we'll get the fire started, and then uh, we'll have a look at two different methods of cooking these fish. Right, so what we'll do, we'll get to, uh, so in this environment now, it's, everything's dry, but with a ferro rod, 
there's not a lot of birch around here. I mean, we've got a little bit of birch bark here which we could use, but we'll use feathers. Have you ever made feather sticks? No, never. So what we'll do, whoops, we'll batten this, uh, we'll split this wood down. So we're, all we're doing is we're making something that's going to light with a spark. So something, something that's pretty, I mean feathers, sort of speaks for itself. Something that's thin, the small sort of flakes as possible that we can, uh, that'll take a spark. So we've got three sticks there. I'll give you a quick, quick demo. So what you want is stuff with nice, nice and dry, like they're, they're bone dry inside, aren't they? Which yeah. is a reason for splitting them down. Or if you've got a bit of dead standing, like this bit of hazel. And what you want to do is we're, we're going we're gonna to do little flakes. So, so we're going to use the side of your knife. Mm -hmm. And ideally, I'm going to go from front, I'm going to use the full length of that blade and I'm just going to cut these, these are what they call the feathers Well it's like quite a delicate process Yeah, I mean I'm doing it dead slow now mm. But we want, you want to leave as many as them on the stick as you can I mean it doesn't matter if they fall off, because we'll still use them, we'll just chuck them in the pile but can you see now I've got through to the wood I'm away yeah. from the bark and so you start getting each time I go down I'll make a little edge so there's another edge there I can take it off like that so each pass is Moving creating slightly up, are you? yeah and I'm creating slight can. edges so now I can take that edge off which gives me a nice little finer curl mm -hmm. and then there's another edge this side so I'm trying to get a big bundle. See how it's left a little bit, bit of an eye spot there? Yeah. I'll take that eye spot off like that. See how they curled out then? Ooh. So this is ideal for like, even in wet weather, where everything, all the outside of the wood's wet. As long as you can split it down like them three, on the inside you'll, you'll find dry wood. So if you can't find like dry grass or uh, bracken or uh, birch bark and mm. stuff like that, these feathers are always, always an option. Yeah, it looks good. Once you get going and you're starting getting these edges and you can take them edges off. start getting some decent curls and ideally this feather stick is your uh, your tinder and your kindling as well so you're gonna have your tinder which is gonna be your really fine stuff and then uh, your kindling will be what's left of this this stick so when this goes down dead thin so your fire catches on these and then it burns into this one as well. So you've got like yeah. every, everything in one. I mean, ultimately, when I get towards the end, I'll just do some really fine ones that, that are gonna catch the spark. You know, little tiny ones like that one there. Yeah. When I get towards the end, uh, I'll do a little pile of them. And they're the ones that are gonna gonna catch our spark so yeah so have a do with one of these so with these you can just start on, on one, one side and what you want to do your first pass if you will go down it and don't take anything off just get a feel for your angle mm -hmm. and then just tilt that blade slightly so it just starts to bite in you don't want it digging in so much so it's just starting to bite in. Yeah, got it. 
So we've got a few feathers going. How do you find it, George, making feathers? Good, very yeah. enjoyable actually. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's going to take a bit of practice to get up to it. Yeah, it always takes a little bit, so getting good. used to it, but uh, I think they're going to do the job to get this fire going. So, have you used a ferro rod before? I have. Cool. Not a lot. Are you pretty good at it? I can, I don't know, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, so what, what I normally do, to fire it onto my bundle, say I'm firing it on one of these bundles, bundles I'll secure my right hand, so I'm not knocking it. I'll secure my right hand, mm -hmm. hold that against it, and then I'll pull this back, so so my flames are, are directed. So my hand's not really moving. I mean, quite right. often I do it with my knife, me. That's, so it's uh, you've got like quite a nice striking room to fire your stuff onto it. So with these here, I'd get one bundle. <coughs> pick a bundle and just put them underneath your firing hand up and there or on the fire yeah hey, you can do it up here and then you can just you can just carry it down onto the fire then so anchor your thing there yep so you can turn that does that need to be an angle that way or that way uh that way that's perfect and then when you pull that back boom so, so, if, we, so if we put them there and that there I mean, and there's always a little bit of uh, thick spark lands in the right spot. Yeah, and do it if you can. Do it on that bit there. Uh, you got more strength then. That's it. Oh yeah. Whoa! Nearly had it then. Yeah, I think you might have it there, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's going. So there you are. So pop that on your on your fire, and then you've got some more feather sticks to put on it there. You pop them on, and then get your nice uh, once they're going, get that big bundle over the top. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of try and prop it up along the back. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That should do it. Decent little lick on already, that, isn't it? Mm, it's looking good. We're just uh, prepping some skewers, and uh, we've got a piece split, so we're going to panace this trout in a minute and uh, get it set up over this fire. So, like I say, a bit of teamwork. George is short, 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 blah, 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 blah. bit of teamwork, George <laughs> is sorting a skewer out there, and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Do they need to have sharp ends? Yeah, yeah, put a point on each end. Yeah, not too bad, because we'll, we'll make holes in fish's skin with it, with our with knife, but uh, makes them easier to thread through if they've got a little bit of a point so what exactly is panace in a trout so panace is uh, it was uh, North American Indians and uh, just their way of drying the meat and cooking the meat so it's a way of uh, just a good way of cooking it over an open fire. And what you do is you remove. What we're doing is we're removing the uh, the backbone and the ribs. So it can be a little bit fiddly on occasion, but you can see all the ribs there, can't you? Yeah. So all these ribs inside. We want to get them out if we can in one go. So you can you can slightly scour down each one. Yeah, so it's just loosening them up a little bit. 
see those little lines down so I'm running down each one of those those ribs so we're just loosening them all up so they'll come out a bit easier Let's spin it down and do the other side just with the tip of my knife and then what you want to do is try and prise them out and get your thumb underneath them see once you get started you're all right that's it Get them out, but leave the meat behind. And then work down very fiddly. And I'll put that little bit of meat there, we'll put that back in when it goes on. Yeah, it is, it's good. Let me know when you're about to do the final move if there is one yeah yeah well i found it that's coming out now that so there so i mean that's great for we've left a few bones in there i have to pick them out so that's uh that'd be brilliant for your uh, crab pot or anything like that bait in a trap or anything like that fantastic yeah for your crayfish find that in a crayfish pot and you're laughing you know that's your breakfast sorted isn't it <laughs> breakfast, yeah, full yeah. Of, breakfast of crayfish make a couple of cuts it's amazing how tough trout and salmon skin is isn't it mm. You know, if you try and stick a skewer through it without making a hole, you have a job and off. <laughs> there we are. Not so bad there. Yeah, that down middle. That's it. And then what we'll do, we'll bind these two together at the top. Now you could use uh, roots for that. You could use a bit of root or anything like that. Or a little bit of cordage. It's always handy to have a little bit of cordage in your pocket. It's one of the uh, five C's for uh, survival and uh, bushcraft <laughs> so to make life easy for yourself so it's like cordage containers cutting tools cover and combustion and if you've got all them uh, all them covered you're halfway there about that distance from fire. That's pretty perfect that. Just able to hold my hand just five, six seconds. That'll cook just a fine gone like that. It'll look good when it's cooked and you get that nice orange glaze. Yeah. What's that Billy? A bit of trout. Hey? Is that good? Hey? Is it good that? Is it good that? We've got a nice little stash of wood sorrel as well. 
So we're going to pack that second trout with wood sorrel and sit it on the embers and let all this cook inside. That'll uh, release that little citrusy sort of bite. So, fantastic. I mean, bushcraft, it's about crafting in a way. So making things, if you're going to do it, make it, make it nice as well. But, uh, but there's definitely value in keeping it simple, isn't, it, isn't there? Oh, yeah. You know, you don't have to spend all day whittling, uh, whittling a knife and fork with a fancy spoon. Just get two straight sticks and whip bark off and make yourself a pair of chopsticks. And you're laughing. If you're any good at using them. But it'd be no good for me. <laughs> be a snack for Billy. Got a little fish's head, do you? You want that? Yeah, a really good crunch on that, eh? Good lad. Good lad. What's that like? Is it good? So there, look at that. Looking beautiful. A panast trout. Yep. You've seen this before on my films, but look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, lovely. Really tasty and moist. Fantastic. So yeah, it's lovely, this trout. George was just saying he's not a particular fan of uh, fish at home and what have you. But he was just saying how much... Uh, how much better it seems to taste out here and whether it's something that's uh, directly related to how much time you've put into making it the graft of getting the fire going of catching the fish of rigging up your uh, your frame for your panacing or whatever and, and cooking it but it really does really does taste good so now we're going to stick this second trout on and this one's just going to go on the coals so George is going to stuff it, we're going to stuff it with a bit of wood sorrel and, uh, and we're going to sit it directly on them coals and the good thing with this method is the skin's that tough on these you don't need to do any scaling or anything like that so what we're going to do we're just going to sit that on the coals and that skin will protect the meat so even though these coals are baking hot the skin will protect the meat from burning and, uh, and hopefully we'll get a little bit of uh, some succulent sort of uh, a tang of that apple, that, that that bite that this wood sorrel will give. And uh, yeah, I reckon this is going to do a great job. It's going to taste beautiful again. That skin is looking good, isn't it? Look at that. Sizzling away as we get it out, then. Bit of skin, look at that nice crispy skin. I'll be having a bit of that. Oh, mate, that is brilliant. <laughs> Looks good. Mm. I'll try a bit of skin in a minute, Billy. It's lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. Lovely that. And a bit of this skin, Billy Bobs. Get a bit of that sorrel on. I know. So this is with trout that's just in the coals with the sorrel inside, the wood sorrel. Such a simple way to cook, but absolutely Fantastic. I mean, that was about, it's only about maybe, maybe seven minutes aside. Obviously, you've got all the, the wind and what have you, and the outside temperature and all sorts of stuff, and how hot your coals are to start with, how many coals there are, etc. But, uh, so you've got quite a few variants, but, yeah, 
didn't take much and it's absolutely beautiful that and really succulent it's amazing how the uh, the skin how tough the skin is and how it protects the fish it really does uh, do a great job of protecting the meat from getting burnt and the skin nice really nice and crisp right thanks for joining us so we've had a cracking day out we've uh, caught a few fish probably one of my bigger brownie brown trout that I've ever caught and uh, cooked them up in a couple of different manners so it's spot on it's been great to get out with George like I say, get over and uh, have a look at George's channel. If you're into adventures and you like a bit of fishing and stuff like that, you can't beat his channel. So I'll give him a look up. But uh, yeah, we've had a top day. Billy's enjoyed himself. He's had a fair bit of fish. He's just trying to finish this one off at the minute. So the one on the calls, that's all that's left with that one. So brilliant. But yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, you know and you. I found some more scraps. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you again soon. All right, see you later. Ta-da.